Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Melody, and I'm here to talk about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. For those who don't know, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is Rocksteady's next entry in the Arkham franchise. This is meant to take place five years after the events of Batman Arkham Knight, and it focuses on Task Force X being sent into Metropolis to stop Brainiac from invading Earth, who has taken over the Justice League. And now it's up to these four criminals to literally kill the Justice League. And I can't lie, I'm hyped as hell for this game. I know there's a lot of controversy around it, especially when it comes to the combat, because it's more of a third-person action shooter rather than a combat game like the Arkham games. In my opinion, that just sounds like people want it to be an Arkham clone rather than a Suicide Squad game. Now, I know a shooter is not what anybody expected when it comes to the Suicide Squad, but I think it can be for a lot of fun. Everything I've seen so far, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I can talk about the battle pass and the always online functionality that, yeah, is a little annoying, but I'll do that in another video. For now, though, I'm going to talk about the four main characters that are playable. When the game launches, you will have access to four members of the Suicide Squad. And today, I'm going to go through them off from my least to most anticipated. From their skill sets to their powers to their traversal and to their design in the end i'm probably going to play as everybody but there are some characters i am more interested in than others so let's get right into it first off is deadshot now just because he is my least anticipated character doesn't mean i think he looks bad i think he looks like he's gonna be a really fun shooter character that obviously fits this style of gameplay more than anybody not only does he have one of the best deadshot designs i've ever seen I love that his main melee, in quotes, if you will, is his wrist cannons. You know, you can't really have Deadshot without those wrist cannons. And I like his jetpack. I think that's a nice addition to his skill set to make him even more of a badass. I like that he can hover in the air to give himself new vantage points. I can tell he can be a really good support character when you're playing online with friends. You just have Deadshot off the distance, picking off people with his sniper slash assault rifle. And I'm really digging that he's the straight of the four. You know, where everyone's kind of crazy and kooky. He's the one that plays everything super straight and he has to deal with all these crazy people. So yeah, I got really nothing bad to say about Deadshot, just that somebody need to be in last place and well, it's Deadshot. Coming up in number three, I've got Harley Quinn. Now, when this game was first announced, I thought, you know what, they're probably just gonna pour it over how she played in Arkham Knight. We had ourselves Harley Quinn. Uh, but no, that is definitely not the case here because Harley plays very different. She's still got her baseball bat, but they mixed in a lot of her shooter capabilities. On top of it all, she's got new traversal abilities. She wields Batman's grapple hook as well as a bat drone to help her swing across the city like it's Marvel Spider-Man. And that to me is the most fun aspect throughout her I've seen so far is her traversal. I think it looks like she's going to have the most uh, fluidity when it comes to going between verticality and her combat. The shelf in this gameplay, it is just smooth how fast she can go from swinging to shooting into her melee combat all in one go. And while I do like her design, it's not my favorite Harley design. But I guess that's what skins and cosmetics are for, so maybe I'll change them in the future. I'd say I kind of digging her prison outfit that we see in the beginning. I actually wouldn't mind switching to that if they're when I play as her. Of course, it's Harley Quinn, so she's going to have all the zaniness, all the one-liners and uh, crazy little things that she does in the background. You know, that's what I expect from Harley, and that's probably going to be the best part about her, as always. As a bonus, I am going to look forward to seeing Harley in a more M for Mature light. Since it is confirmed the game is going to have that rating. I love what they did with Harley Quinn in The Suicide Squad by James Gunn. How they were able to portray her in an R-rated fashion. So I'm hoping this game kind of leans into that as well. Other than her design not being my absolute favorite she's ever had. I think she still looks like she's going to be a, a lot of fun to play. And yeah, uh, it's going to be nice to see her continue from her journey in Arkham Knight. Hopefully she has a bit more character development because that was my only issue with her across the free Arkham games is that she was... Uh, you won't get away with this! Kind of one note. Here I'm hoping we get to see her become more of her own character. Next up at number two is one that I don't think is going to be a surprise to everybody but I'm really looking forward to King Shark. There's just something inherently appealing about playing a man-shaped shark. He wields two blades and he's got massive machine guns and he's got godlike powers that make him jump into the air like he's the Hulk and slam down. 
As a DC fan, I am loving that this character is getting more and more attention lately, especially after the Suicide Squad movie. And here, not only is he played by Samoa Joe, which is absolutely insane, I think this is possibly one of the best designs for King Shark I've ever seen. I like the blue coloring on him, the tattoos all over his body, and combined with his really naive personality that they've given him, I think this is going to be one of the more heartfelt characters to play as. Because yeah, he's this big brute, but he's also almost like a child. Not as much as maybe the James Gunn version, but he's still got that childlike personality that just it's always appealing when he's coming from this big, mean-looking monster. It actually makes me hope that one day, when this game has more content, that we see like an Aquaman expansion, where we see King Shark go up against a Brainiac-controlled Aquaman. I think that'd be tons of fun to see. And though I'm usually not the biggest fan of bruiser characters, I think this one just looks too much fun to play, and he seems to have way more versatility than most bruiser characters would in these kinds of games. I can't wait to see what other extra skin that we get for him, because I already love the classic skin of the showroom with the way taller fin and the fist. I think he looks great. Oh well, my, this character came very close to being my number one, but and now we get to my most anticipated character when it comes to the launch version of Suicide Squad Guild Justice League, and that is Captain Boomerang. There are a lot of aspects that go into why I'm so excited for this character. I'm always a fan of fast characters. You know, if I can charge in, do as much DPS as possible, and get out, you know, that's my thing. Well, they made Captain Boomerang a speedster. He has Speed Force Gauntlet that makes him traverse the world like the Flash. He has that combined with his classic Boomerang abilities, and it makes for a character that looks so much fun to just move around the world, let alone the combat. And I can't lie, I am a bit of a soft spot when it comes to vulgar Australian characters. They're looking forward to killing the Justice League and all, but, uh, well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. Hey, man, watch the- Ah, shit! Glass. I'm a... Oh, is this a superhero museum? Hate superheroes! And so far, when it comes to the writing and the acting of the character, everything I've seen of it looks perfect. I can't wait to see the boss fight between him and the Dark Flash. It just looks like it's going to be so much fun and a perfect sample of their rivalry. And he's got more than just the speed when it comes to his traversal. He can teleport using the speed force combined with his boomerang. He can teleport across the map. When it comes to fast traveling, that's going to be very helpful. And honestly, when it comes to his design, I think it's so good that I don't think I really need any alternate skins to be happy. Like, I could play as that version of Captain Goomerang through the whole game and I'd be happy. And there you have it. Those are my most anticipated characters in order from least to most anticipated when it comes to Suicide Squad. Maybe I'll go for King Shark first when I play the game. Maybe I'll play Captain Boomerang. Yeah, maybe I even pick that shot. Who knows? For now though, Captain Boomerang is my most anticipated. But like I said, in the future, I'm probably going to play through the game as all four characters at some point. That's part of the whole fun of a game like this, where I can restart, play as King Shark, restart, play as Harley, restart, play as Deadshot, you know. Uh, maybe I can play through all four in one campaign, or I can restart and do a whole character for a whole campaign. But this is just my opinion. What are your guys' thoughts? Who are you most excited to play as in Suicide Squad Kill Justice League? Are you excited to play the game on launch on February 2nd? Please! Give me your thoughts down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload future content, and until then, I bid you all farewell.